Good morning. Welcome to the Mind of STEM channel, where you get your daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. My name is Leon Jones, and today I'm going to have an interesting topic because I'm going to get more into mapping. So today I'm going to talk about digital elevation modeling and it is very fantastic because you utilize mapping and there are areas within mapping such as cartography gis digital terrain modeling that will also be beneficial to this topic now a software that i just used on Friday is very prevalent to digital elevation modeling. In fact, if you're going to create terrain, you go into this software called Autodesk Maya. Now there's another one out there called Blender. There's 3D Max, but Maya is an animation software that creates characters in 3D. Now, the good thing about Autodesk Maya, it's very big in the movie industry, very popular. Now, Blender is good for architecture and interior design, but it also can do mapping. But Maya... One thing that you can do with this software, you can take a map from Google after you create a plane in the software called Maya and integrate that map into your plane and you follow the prompts and you can create mountains. Now, when we talk about a digital elevation model, what we're really informing you today or talking about today is it's basically a 3D computer graphics representation of elevation data to represent terrain commonly of a planet such as the earth we can utilize it for the moon or an asteroid a global DEM refers to a discrete global Grid. Now, DEMs are often used in GIS. Now, GIS is Geographical Information Systems and are most commonly uh, produced for maps. Again, DEMs. And when I talk about DEMs, I'm talking about a digital elevation model. It's commonly used in geographical information systems and it's the most common basis for digitally produced relief maps now while a digital surface model known as a dsm may be useful for landscape modeling city modeling or visualization applications a dtm which is a digital terrain model you see all the concepts that i just mentioned earlier are coming into play with a digital elevation model well, a DTM is often required for flood or drainage modeling, land use studies, geological applications or other applications, and in planetary science. Now, the terminology. There is no usage of the terms digital elevation model, digital terrain model, or digital surface model in scientific literature. Now, in most cases, the term digital surface model represents the Earth's surface and includes all objects on it. Now, in contrast to a DSM, the DTM, which is a digital terrain model, represents the bare ground surface without any objects like planets and buildings. Now, DEM is often used as a generic term for DSMs and DTMs, only representing height information without any further definition about the surface. Now, other definitions equalize the terms DEM and DTM, equalize the terms 
DEM and DSM. Define the DEM as a subset of the DTM, which also represents other morphological elements, or define a DEM as a rectangular grid and a DTM as a three-dimensional model. Because most of the data providers, USGS, ERSDAC, SIGIAR, Spot Image, use the term DEM as a generic term for DSMs and DTMs. Now, all data sets which are captured with satellites, airplanes, or other flying platforms are originally DSMs like SRTM, SRTM, and ASTER, and GDIM, although in forested areas. Now, SRTM reaches into the tree canopy, giving readings somewhere between a DSM and a DTM because it is possible to estimate a DTM from high-resolution DSM data sets with complex algorithms. Now, in the following, the term DTM, correction, the term DEM. Again, in the following, the term DEM is used as a generic term for DSMs and DTMs. Now, a DEM can be represented as a raster, which a raster is a grid of squares, also known as a height mat. And again, a raster is a grid of squares, also known as a height map when representing elevation, or as a vector-based triangular irregular network known as 10. The 10 DEM data set is also represented to as a primary measure DEM, whereas the raster DEM is a secondary computed DEM. Now, the DEM can be acquired through techniques such as photogrammetry, LIDAR, LFSAR, land survey. Now, DEMs are commonly built using data collected, using, which uses remote sensing techniques. And these may also be built from land surveying. Again, DEMs are basically created by using a data collector. And land surveyors use data collector, use data collectors when shooting points out in the field. Now, when it comes to rendering, the digital elevation model itself consists of a matrix of numbers, but the data from a DEM is often rendered in visual to make it understandable to humans. Now, the visualization may be in the form of a contour typographical map or could use shading and false color assignment or pseudo color to render elevations as colors. For example, using green for the lowest elevations, shading to red with white for the highest elevation. Now, visualizations are sometimes done as oblique views, reconstructing a synthetic visual image of the terrain as it would appear looking down at an angle. And these oblique visualizations, elevations, are sometimes scaled using vertical exaggeration in order to make subtle elevation differences more noticeable. Now, some scientists, however, object to vertical exaggeration as misleading to the viewer about the true landscape. Now, mappers may prepare digital elevation models in a number of ways, but they frequently use remote sensing rather than direct survey data. Now, older methods for generating DEMs involve interpolating digital contour maps that may have been produced by direct survey of the land surface. The method is still used in mountain areas where interferometry, uh, interferometry is not always satisfactory. Note that the contour data, line, or any other sample elevation data sets by GPS or ground survey and not by DEMs, but may be considered digital terrain models. Again, a lot of this data is produced by land surveyors and GPS, and I forgot that term, global positioning systems. Again, the contour data or any other sample data subsets or elevation subsets or ground survey, they're not DEMs, but may be considered as digital terrain models because a DEM 
simply implies that the elevation is available continuously at each location in the study area. Now, when we talk about mapping, okay, one powerful technique for generating DEMs is interferometric synthetic aperture radar, where two passes of a radar satellite, such as RadarSat-1 or Terra-SAR-X or Cosmos SkyMad or a single pass if the satellite is equipped with two antennas like the SRTM instrumentation, instrumentation collect sufficient data to generate a digital elevation map tens of kilometers on a side with a resolution of about or around 10 meters. Other kinds of stereoscopic pairs can be employed using the digital image correlation method where two optical images are acquired with different angles taken from the same pass of an airplane or an Earth observation satellite, such as the HRS instrument of SPOT-5 or the VNIR band of Aster. The SPOT-1 satellite provided the first usable elevation data for a sizable portion of the planet's landmass using two-pass stereoscopic correlation. Later, further data were produced by the European Remote Sensing Satellite using the same method. The Shutter Radar top, uh, Topography Mission, a topography mission, mission, that's the Shutter Radar Topography Mission using single pass SAR and other advanced space borne thermal emission and reflection radiometer or radiometer instrumentation on the Terra satellite using double pass stereo pairs. Now, the HRS instrument on spot five has acquired over 100 million square kilometers of stereo pairs. Now, one thing you want to know about the old way of doing things, they used the least square method. Photogrammetry is part of digital elevation mapping. But what I'm doing, I'm tying the software Maya, which is an animation software, in the GIS, LIDAR, land surveying, GPS, cartography. Because what you're basically doing is producing maps. And you can utilize contour maps as well. Contour maps indicate the elevations. Now, when you have a contour map, when the contour lines are spread far apart, that means the topography or the topography is shallow. Now, when the contour lines are close together, that means the topography is steep. Now, when it comes to planetary mapping, a tool of increasing value in planetary science has always been use of orbital altimetry used to make digital elevation maps of planets. Now, a primary tool for this is laser altimetry, but radar altimetry is also used. Planetary digital elevation maps made using laser altimetry include Mars orbital laser altimeter known as MOLA, mapping of Mars, the lunar orbital laser altimeter known as LOLA, and lunar altimeter, which is LAT, L-A-A-T, mapping of the moon, and the Mercury laser altimeter known as MLA, mapping of Mercury, and planetary mapping. Each planetary body has a unique reference surface. Now, methods again for using or creating DIMMs. Radar, LIDAR, of course you have theodolite or total station, Doppler radar, range imaging, surveying and mapping drones. Now when it comes to accuracy, it's terrain roughness, sample density, interpolation algorithm, reference 3D products include quality mass that give information on the coastline like snow clouds correlation. Now, when it comes to uses, 
Uh, we talk about extracting terrain parameters, uh, geomorphology, 3D flight planning, rendering of 3D visualizations, creation of physical models, terrain analysis, and geomorphology, and physical geography, GIS, engineering and infrastructure designs, base mapping. The list goes on and on. But this is a very interesting topic because when it comes to animation, and I didn't notice myself, animation can also be used in infrastructure. Most people think that animation is used just for creating cartoon characters. And that's where the Autodesk Maya software and Blender come into use because with that software, you can create maps. Once you've collected all the data, you made a map via a topographical survey. You can actually upload all the data using Carlson software. Once your map is created, you can create your, you can, you can, once your map is created, you can then bring your map into Maya, put it in the plane after you created it, and then using your brush and your tools, and you have to find out how wide you want your grid, you can create a digital elevation model. Now remember, when it comes to digital elevation modeling, it is a 3D graphics representation of elevation data to represent terrain, commonly a planet, moon, or asteroid. asteroid. Now, global DEM refers to a discrete global grid. And remember, DEMs are often used in geographic information systems. And most common use when it comes to DEMs, they're basically used for producing relief maps. And that concludes this topic on digital elevation mapping. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. Now, I want you all to support my content because this content is free. And when I talk about supporting the content, I'm just asking you to view it and share it. This information is very prevalent if you want to go into the STEM field. Now, if you're looking for politics and other controversial topics, you check out my other YouTube channel, the 401 Talk Zone radio show. And if you want to go even more deep into controversy, check out the 401 Talk Zone radio show on Blog Talk Radio. Now, if you can't find me on Blog Talk Radio or YouTube, simply check me out on Facebook and Twitter. And it's very important that you support this content. This is free content, very interesting content, and this content can come to fruition if you want a career in STEM because I chose the STEM topics because I am in STEM, and STEM is made up of careers that are very innovative to life, and I've done a number of topics from engineering to different CAD softwares, epidemiology, but it's very important that you understand that STEM is demanding. And at the end of the day, you will be impressed with a STEM career. But just do well in your math and science. And once again, I thank you for listening to this topic of digital 
elevation modeling from the mind of STEM channel, where you get your daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. You have a wonderful and gracious day, and God bless you.